welcome back to Teach Here, There, Anywhere. And today we are going to be talking about tools you can use in your flats classes at OutSchool. These are also amazing tools if you were teaching um, in a brick and mortar school or another online platform. But really, it is an amazing tool for OutSchool flex classes. And I'm going to walk you through that platform and just kind of give you some tips on what to do today. I'm really excited to show you this. Okay. Okay, so here is the Nearpod um, platform here. So when you log in, um, just so you know, I have the Nearpod Gold. So I have paid to upgrade to the Gold. If you were using Nearpod in your flex classes, you will need the Gold so that you can have that link to share it outside of your, you know, virtual classroom because... Um, it has a student paste option, um, and that's what you'll need to have um, for these, for your classes. Okay, so these are all things that I have made, um, and I put them in folders, um, and, and then I use them this way. So if I was looking for amazing animals, um, I have all of my lessons for my flex class right here in my folder. So each flex class is organized by folder. And then there's all of my um, Nearpod activities. I'm going to let you go ahead and give a sneak peek of one of mine. This right here is my um, math games addition and subtraction. I'm going to go student paste. Um, this is how you would show a something. So you're going to go student paste. Um, you're going to push launch a new thing. Uh, you're going to get a link. And then you also want to make sure you put this code. So I do both. Um, since I'm logging on mine, I will not need that, but here it would go. So you can put your name right here and join the session. So this is something I did. Um, now, there are lots of different options. So this actually has a, um, like, where you can draw on the screen option. Um, and here we were doing a game, and I didn't want to pre-label because I thought they might want something. You can do also text right here and move it around. Um, so that's one way. Here is a tense frame. It's one of the resources I use. I created this on Canva. Um, and then what I did was I just took that PDF and put it in here. And then I let it um, mark that you could draw on it. Again, there's the same thing. They have a matching game. So I put um, the thing and then they get to match um, the answer. For example, nine. Then they have to find... Um, the answer right there. So like 5 plus 5 is 10. And then they get that. So this is one option. Um, I really do like the matching game. It's really simple and it's really fun if you have an activity in mind that you could match things with. Okay, so again, here's a PDF I, PDF I uploaded. Another game they have is a memory test. So where they try you try to match them up. Um... And then you just try to see, you know, match up the things. Maybe it's a vocabulary word that you're learning. Maybe it's a word or sight word that you're working on, whatever it is. So that's another one. Um, again, here's another matching one I have for this activity. Another memory game. Um, but another one I love to use is right here. Let me find it. My math games class. Let's go to addition. Okay. So here is another one of my classes. So right here we have um, I've, I've actually embedded my YouTube video that I put right um, that I put there um, because it only allows for a certain number of megabytes for each lesson. Um, you can't just upload your videos onto this, but it does have a really simple feature to put your videos into your lesson. And that's been an awesome resource there. Um, very simple to use. 
And then it has a collaboration board. So here you can ask a question and then it's like you can put your answer and it pops up. And then you can like it, you can let, you know, you can interact with others on the board, which is really nice. There again is another video I made. Here is, you can insert the PDF, so I, I give them a PDF that they can um, do, um, complete um, each week for my flex classes, and I just place them right here. So that way everything that they need is in one spot, and I don't have to worry about trying to remember to upload multiple things a week. Again, there's the matching. This is a game called Time to Climb. I really like this game. It's super simple. The um, student can choose an animal. There's also nice background, um, background music the whole time. Once you push start, it's like a game. So students will be practicing whatever question and then whatever answers you put in there. Um, and then the character over here will climb up the mountain and it goes on and on and on you can put as many questions that you as you like or the variety of questions you don't like if your student were to get it wrong it's gonna say all snap and it's gonna give them the correct answer another thing I like about Nearpod is that you can do polls so um, you can choose, like for example, I can actually have a question. I can put an audio right here. What was your favorite addition game that we learned this week? I want you to choose which one that you liked. So I can actually record something there. This right here is called Immersive Reader. So if you have a student who has some um, disabilities or struggles with reading, this is a great tool that they can use. And all they have to do is push it. Um, and then any words on the screen are going to come into this um, immersive reader, and it's going to Which read is your for them. Edition game that you played this week? A math dice game. B teacher versus student game. C card edition. D edition matching game. E time to climb. So it gives them options, which is really nice for either um, your younger um, students or if you are ha you have some um, struggling readers or kids with dyslexia or something like that. Okay, so those are that. Now let's show ahead and jump in, and I'm going to actually walk through. So if you want to create a lesson in Nearpod. You're going to do create your own lesson in Nearpod. You can also do this in Google Slides, um, which I can show you in just a minute. So there is a way to make this in Google Slides. You install the Nearpod add-on by going to add-ons here, and then you can add Nearpod. You open in Nearpod. Um, and at this point, you can do all the activities that you would have done over there right here. So this is a great way if you want things not to be saved on your Nearpod um, account only um, to save it over here. And you can do a lot of the same features. I'm going to jump back over to Nearpod. Um, so when you want to create a new lesson plan, you're just going to go, there we go. So it does save in Nearpod, but it saves as Nearpod lesson or whatever you title it as. Um, if you want to create in Nearpod, you can do that as well. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna add a slide. So there are different options. You can add a video. This would be like if you have a YouTube video that is Creative Commons or um, public domain, or if you have a video that you have recorded yourself and then you can put it as unlisted, and then you put that link right here and anybody with the link can view, or anybody who comes in here and plays this video can actually see that. The other thing right here is a slide. I'm gonna actually jump into the slide. Now the slide, you can change your background. You can search things for background. There's also themes. These change the whole entire 
um, lessons. So you cannot choose a different theme for every single page, but you can change the layout of it, whether you want four elements or whether you want a title and two elements or whether you want a title and one element. There's some different things there. You can also add audio to every single one of these. So for some of my lessons, instead of doing big videos, I'll actually just add an audio recorder. And if you click here, you can record whatever you would like and you can save it onto the screen and it saves right there everything that you just said. And when you're ready, you can actually play that back and it works. So I'm going to save and exit this. Every time you want to start a new slide, you're going to save and exit. So here, maybe I want to put um, a Nearpod field trip. These are really fun. Um, so you can search up any kind of play, any place that you want. So I, I'm going to start, I'm going to look up um, Tennessee. So it's going to search the database for any kind of um, things that they can find. And so you'll see right here, there's a lot of different places it found. Um, and you can actually go on virtual field trips. Um, they're very, very short. Um, so, and you're just going to look on the outside. But for example, if we were going to the Chattanooga, Tennessee Aquarium, you can actually completely turn yourself all the way around. Um, you can enter a virtual reality where you're actually, it looks like you're looking. So that's super fun and pretty exciting for students. Um, another thing they have that I use um, right here is the PDF viewer. If you want to put PDFs in the document, maybe you want them to have access to something. This is one way that, um, the way that I send all PDFs to my students. Um, so I upload them there and then they can actually download them. Um, I do, so there are some other things like you can put web content if you're doing some other activity on a different website um, that you've had approved or Nearpod 3D, um, simulations, um, Sway slideshows, audio, whatever you have. Here are some of my favorite things to use in the platform. So if you do Time to Climb, that's the one game that um, you has a lot of different activities. So here you will write your question. You can also put an image if you like. Um, there are some times like with money and things like that that I put an image um, and they had to use it. And then you can use text or image um, examples and then you just choose your answer right there um, or you choose your um, image um, and you push add a question and you can keep adding those and your answer can either be um, images or text and then you save them oh it makes you add something I'm just going to add um, to every single thing or you'll get a note that it won't save so there is what I would do okay so there's time to climb um, that's an awesome activity for your things. Another one I like to do is the, are these open-ended questions. And I like to enable student audio re recordings because I'm an ESL teacher. And I know some students are not, especially because I work with the elementary level, some students do not have the ability to type yet, um, especially in those younger grades. And so I enable it. So you can write your question here. You could even add Audio, video instructions or audio instructions or do an audio recorder or whatever you would like and you can save it um, and then that student can go in and it's an open-ended question that they can either type or do a video an audio response to Matching pairs is one of my favorite um, things to do. So you can put some instructions here and then you can add a pair, whether it be a text or a text and image or an image and um, both 
words or whatever you want to do. And then once and then um, once you have all of those there, um, it actually makes that fun game where students can choose to, and then they kind of put that green check mark when they get it right. Here we have our quiz. This is kind of the same um, format of the Time to Climb. It's just not in a game format. It's a little bit more boring. I choose to use the Time to Climb because the students are doing by themselves, and I'm like, I want to make learning fun. I'd rather take my quiz like, or you know, my assessment like that. So that's what my students do. Now, if we look here, Flipgrid. Now I know some. Um, out school do not like Flipgrid, um, allow Flipgrid, and others really encourage it. But this is a way to put that link um, of Flipgrid. So my Flipgrid um, link here does not require um, a student to have to have a login. So I put that my Flipgrid teacher URL, whatever they're going to go to, um, and then I put my administrative one plus that one that they're going to go to, and then they don't. They do not need to log in. They don't need to do anything, and um, your students can interact on Flipgrid. Hoping this makes sense. If you have questions, please let me know below, and I'm happy to answer them. Draw it is one of my favorite ones um, that I use. As I told you, you can upload a background like a PDF or a um, JPEG or PNG right there. Um, and so you can upload whatever you would like here. Um, and then what would happen is you say save. And that document right here is now a drawlet. So with the drawlet, once you open it back up, it will have the ability, well, once you like present it, you can actually draw all over that screen. If you don't put anything there, it's just going to be a white thing, um, but a place where you could draw and have students work on things. The collaboration boards are my absolute favorites um, because I like how all your students can interact on the same board. Um, and what I do at the beginning of my Flipgrid every week is I just go in to that link that I put and I just write a few things in there um, to start it off. You can put a topic, you can put a picture, um, you can choose the style of your board. Um, and so that's really a nice way for your students to collaborate. If you look right here um, in activities, um, you can also see the poll. Now the poll is um, a great way to help have your students um, be interactive. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a poll here and put your options. You can add media, video, audio right here, add a timer if you don't want them to have a lot of time, and then just push save. And then it saves at that as that poll that I showed you earlier. Here we have a fill in the blank. This is not one that I've tried a whole lot, um, but really you get to choose. So maybe you want to say, I really like, hmm, um, hmm because it's, oh, but you're actually in there. I really like pizza because it has cheese on it, whatever it is. And then what you're going to do here is you're going to go next, and then you're going to click the words over here to add it. Now, now this isn't a really good um, example for fill in the blank, but I'm just trying to give you an example. And then what happens when it pushes done, the students, when they go back into that lesson, will then have to try to use the word box over there to fill in your answer. And then we have the memory test. Now the memory test um, uses um, the same images, um, or you can use an image on one side, and then the students flip them over to try to find the same one. So, and you can choose what kind of grid you would like there. Okay, so my top ones that I use are this time to climb, open into question, matching pairs, 
Um, I do have a couple of flip grids um, because it was required by Nearpod for a few of mine when they did um, my reviews. Draw it, collaborate, and pull. If I go over here to content, I do have a couple of things that I use a field trip for. And then I use slides all the time for so many different things. Um, I have I incorporated a video. So right here, if I were to put um, find my link of a video, I could copy paste right here. Um, and then um, you can search actually. Um, now I know. And you can look at the, the things here, okay? So you can find the videos. You can look right here um, if they're public domain or whatever. And you can go find those right over there. Um, so those are my some short tips of what how I use Nearpod. Um, again, just as you so you can see this live, um, really. If you click up Nearpod on the top, it's going to take you back here. Um, you can see in my math claims class, you can see a lot of this. Um, for example, we're going to do a student pace lesson, launch a student pace lesson. I have my PDF here, I have my um, my videos, I have a matching where I've done pictures and um, numbers. I have the time to climb, I have how much is it where I put a picture and then they have to tell how much it is and why and I can interact with them on that. I have another time to climb in this lesson. Um, students can choose between all of the fun designs they have here. Um, again, here's another matching game. I have um, how do you do this? And so students can actually um, drop images um, and they can write the queens that I would use here. Here is a draw it version. So what I would say is if I said you need 50 cents and all they need to do right here is go draw circle on the screen 50 cents. And so this is just one way. This is also a, um, able to be printed out. Um, and so my students can actually print out this as well. And then I have a poll at the end of every class. Now, I also, in, um, so when I write these, let me give you a little sneak peek into how I do these. So when I write my, um, for example, my math games, um, what I do is I keep notes on my thing here. Um, and what I will do is I will have my welcome. I will put in this week what they're going to do. I'm going to have, if I have a YouTube video to kind of start off the week, I do do that on week one. And then I don't do it for the rest of the time, most of the time. I'm going to talk about questions. If you have any questions, let me know. And then I'm going to put that Nearpod link that you can get um, by just going student paste and then what you will do is launch a new paste lesson here you are going to do this um you're going to copy this one and then you're going to also make sure you put that code because some students need to do the code based on however they log in so you're going to use that um, and you're going to put it right here this right here is ready to be pasted and i schedule these um I schedule these. Um, another thing I realized is that the student pasting also can um, is only for 30 days. So, for example, if you need to extend that time, you can. So you can go. Um, it right now says that they have 20 days remaining. You can make it last for however long you want. So if I want it to go all the way to November 30th, I could do that by just doing that right there. And then I could apply it. So this one is available for 121 days. Um, 
for when I just did that. So you can adjust the time of, so with my, for example, my math games class is six weeks long. So I um, can copy um, and paste. I can go ahead and make all of my notes. And then the next time I come to um, offer this class again, I will just make new links um, and make sure that it will complete um, whenever my class is finished. So I will do this a lot. Um, so I already, I already have all of my lessons and all of my things written out for my whole entire um for my whole entire class, um, flex class. So it's easy, it's easy to use, and then all my students have to do is go onto the OutSchool platform. I'll give you a sneak peek into my OutSchool platform here. So if you go into my schedule, you can see that right here is one of my OutSchool platforms. Um, and actually, um, so here is my lesson. My student can come right here. They can push it. And it takes them to the Nearpod activity for the week. Um, theirs will actually go to a screen to log in, but because um, this is my own it recognizes that I'm actually on there. Um, so for example, and it, another way to test this, if you have a Mac, you can actually go to new incognito win window. And I use this a lot to make sure it's gonna work for my students. So my students will get this. It'll pop on. They're gonna write their first name. They do not have to write their full name. You can explain how, what they what you want them to do here. I'm going to push join the session. And then there is all the things, my videos, everything. And I don't have to do anything else for the week um, besides just kind of check in with them and encourage them and to just be that encouraging figure and um, reply to whatever they say. So I set days for that so I um, and times for that so I can just enjoy My time. Um, I set times for that so I'm not just constantly on checking to make sure my students need me. Um, but I do check um, about two or three times a week and interact with them on those days. So, yeah, I hope Nearpod helped you. Um, so, what do you think? Are you going to use that in your classroom? I hope this helps you. It is an amazing tool and I love using it for the ease that I can put all of my content into one place and then all I need to do for my students is just upload that link. So yes, incredible, incredible resource and I hope that it helps you if you were creating flex classes to really help um, just make that student day engagement go up even more. If you were a brick and mortar teacher, I hope it makes it fun, easy um, for you as well. So thank you for um, joining me today. If you'd like to hear more about this, please make sure you subscribe and um, that you ring that bell so you do not miss a thing. Um, Next time, we are going to be talking about another tool that I use in my out school classes called Canva. Okay, so st stop back in and I will share with you how I use Canva in OutSchool. See you soon.